the Flood is one of the most terrifying enemies in all of gaming, and in all of sci-fi. From the horrible guttural sounds the different forms make, to the eerie music that orchestrates their presence. However, one form above all else is the most terrifying of all. So terrifying, in fact, that its employment of mythology and religion makes it even scarier than you may realize. So sit back, grab your diapers, and let's explore the grave mind and how mythology makes it scary. Before we dive in, we need to understand what exactly the grave mind is within the Halo series. To start, we have to go back in time millions of years into the past and to the race of the precursors, which is something that I plan on covering in better detail in a later video down the line. But to briefly explain, the Precursors were the original intelligent race in the galaxy, so intelligent in fact that they were capable of creating new life forms and assisting in their biological and technical evolution. One of their created races, the Forerunners, rebelled against the Precursors and nearly wiped them out of existence. Nevertheless, some of them escaped and hid from the Forerunners, devolving themselves into primordial dust. This dust would continue to travel throughout the galaxy, awaiting a proper time to reform. However, the reforming didn't go as planned, and their organic matter became corrupted as it began to reconstitute, forming the Flood and subsequently the Gravemind. As for the Gravemind itself, it's a gestalt of both living and dead organic matter. Comprising itself of dead bodies, it's corrupted over time while maintaining and growing its consciousness to an exponential level, becoming a nigh-unstoppable eldritch horror, consuming millions in the name of continual expansion and control, to the point that all becomes one. In this, the Gravemind uses what's known as the Logic Plague, or the forceful integration of collected knowledge of everything it has consumed to effectively think the new host to death. This is apparent in the final logs of Captain Keys before the grave mind takes full control of him, utilizing millions of years of knowledge while integrating it into Keys' memories and consciousness. This sort of mind-bending power and perversion of one's psyche is not uncommon within the mythos of H.P. Lovecraft, though it hasn't been mentioned as an inspiration outright, or at least from what I've looked into, the Precursors and the eventual Flood show that there are some real connections to the late author's work. As we just mentioned, the mind-bending insanity that the grave mind is able to use on new hosts is not unlike what the ancient god Cthulhu is capable of. With the Great Old One, it's able to use its psychic abilities to drive a person to insanity, forcing their dreams to become logic-filled nightmares in an effort to make that person a thrall. Seeking nothing more than to control and rule the universe, Cthulhu spreads his influence across the entire galaxy, gaining more worshippers and knowledge as time goes on. Even the locations of both the Gravemind and Cthulhu are similar, as one existed under the waters and the depths of Installation 05, the other exists deep under the Pacific Ocean in the lost city of Relay. Cementing this further is the fact that Cthulhu's name comes from the word Chthonic, a Greek word for something inhabiting the underworld. As well, both the Gravemind and Cthulhu aren't capable of fully dying. For the Gravemind, even if one flood spore lives, it's able to maintain the knowledge of its past while furthering its spread across the galaxy. For Cthulhu, they're able to regenerate even when taking damage, and is even capable of existing outside of known reality. In my initial playthroughs of Halo 2 and Halo 3 years ago, I never fully realized just how terrifying the Gravemind really was, making this eldritch horror a nightmare to come face to face with. But 
This isn't the only thing that makes the grave mind terrifying, as its clever uses of biblical philosophy and biblical myths bring even more dread to us as the player. Within Halo 3's mission Floodgate, we get a small taste of the grave mind's psychic abilities, as it's able to speak directly to the Master Chief, and being incredibly powerful, it's able to grind the Chief to a halt and quotes some of the oddest yet familiar lines to the chief and us, the player. Do not be afraid. I am peace. I am salvation. As the first line spoken by the grave mind to the chief in Halo 3, it's a strikingly powerful and eerie moment, shaking our view and flooding our perception of what's around us with so much that it's difficult to see anything, let alone move. But for many of us who went to Sunday school as kids, the lines, do not be afraid, I am peace, I am salvation, are familiar because this is similar to what's been seen in Bible verses. More specifically, when an angel comes to greet a person for the first time, they begin by saying, do not be afraid. As well, this beginning line, do not be afraid, is quoted several times throughout the Christian and Hebrew Bible. For anyone who's looked up what ancient biblical angels look like, you'll understand why this quote was mentioned so often by them. As within the angelology, of not only Christianity, but also Judaism and Islam, angels sit within a hierarchy. Though each religion holds some angels in different rankings, the most notable among them are the seraphim, who have six wings, with a pair covering their eyes and another covering their feet. The cherubim, who have four faces of a man and other animals, as well as having two separate sets of wings. And finally, the Ophanim, or thrones, who appear as flaming wheels of eyes and wings. Surely, any normal person seeing any of these appear in front of them would have them fearing for their lives and for their souls. The same can be said about the grave mind's pervasiveness within the Master Chief's mind. I should say, however, that the mention of Do Not Be Afraid is spoken as an omnipresent voice by the Abrahamic God as well, filling the listener's mind, like Abraham and Moses, with the Word of God, again connecting back to the Grave Mind's God complex. As for the second part of the Grave Mind's opening statement, I am peace, I am salvation, this is his way of controlling or influencing the chief's perspective, wanting more than anything to sway the chief and us the player to accept the grave mind's dominance. Because if we give in to this desire, our body and our mind would grow the flood's collective knowledge and consciousness, furthering their control over the entire galaxy. Of course, Within the same mission, the Grave Mind continues on, stating, I am a timeless chorus. Join your voice with mine and sing victory everlasting. This refers back to how the Grave Mind is able to speak to us. A very notable scene in Halo 3 actually helps us understand even more of its terrifying nature. In the mission, the Covenant, the Arbiter and the Chief are stopped and spoken to by the Grave Mind through the pure forms of the Flood. This shows the collective power of this Eldritch creature, as it can use the many forms of the Flood to further its spread and control. These tank forms that stop the duo are known as pure forms, controlled by the Grave Mind and have the power to shapeshift during different fights, depending upon the need. Additionally, they're able to not only fight, but infect living and dead hosts. 
This isn't far off from the demons of Vedic mythology, the Pisachas, appearing in the mythologies of both Hinduism and Buddhism, as well as some Thai folklore. Pishachas are pure manifestations of evil and corruption. Being varied in size, the Pisachas are described as having beady red eyes and bulging veins throughout their body. As we look at the grave mind and the pure forms, as well as many other forms, they share some resemblances with having bulging veins and globules as well as having the red tendrils they use as eyes. But for the Pisachas, what really connects them to both the pure forms and especially the grave mind was the fact that these demons fed off of humans and their energy. Being capable of altering a person's mental stability, their perception, as well as producing abnormalities throughout the person's body. On top of all this, is the fact that these demons have the ability to shapeshift into whatever they please, and whenever they want, in an attempt to steal the person's body and energy. This isn't unlike the capabilities of both the pure forms and even the grave mind in their drive for galactic control and galactic consumption. So, what else makes the grave mind terrifying to you? And what else might have I missed about the grave mind? Let me know down in the comments. And if you're interested in learning more about Halo and the mythology behind it, then click on this video right here. And thank you so much for watching and showing your support. I'll see you all next time. Trade one